Hello and welcome back to another exciting edition from Ironbridge of the Blackford Book Club. The only BBC you're ever going to need. I'm reading currently from my second self-published book, Ashes to Ashes, a book I'm immensely proud of. Watching England through the night, 2021 to 2023. Um, it's raining, there's a thunderstorm coming, so I'm going to be quick. Dominant Adelaide wind sees Aussies go 2-0 up. Rather than a session by session recap, here's today's play and their notable timings in real time. 3.30 a.m. and a shrilling alarm wakes me from my slumbers and whereas yesterday I awoke to the mists of a Victorian England shrouded in a freezing fog, this morning was clear, crisp and clearly blooming cold. 4 a.m. and with a huge lead and with only six wickets needed for victory, Australia start the day as they clearly and correctly mean to go on. Mitchell Stark opens the bowling to a ring field of three slips, a gully and a loudly chirping set of cricketing comrades in the close-in field. The goat, Nathan Lyon, opens the bowling from the other end to a brilliantly old-fashioned and hyper-pleasing field of five catches and the wicketkeeper around the bat slips, gully and a bat pad. Manus Labashain is incessantly chirping like a songbird on the stump mic. This is Test Match Cricket. 4.09 a.m. Pope, Court Smith, Bold Stark, 5. Mitchell Stark was magnificent as always this morning and with only nine minutes play gone, he snagged Ollie Pope after he set him up by bowling across him, frustrating him, and then he pushed the delivery slightly wider and Pope didn't have to play the ball, but he did, nicking an outside edge to Aussie Captain Smith, her second slip. 4.19 a.m. and Joss Butler is the recipient of what is commonly known in the cricketing vernacular as a life as he edges the dangerous Stark through the gap between wicketkeeper and first slip. There clearly should not be a gap between these two closest of catches and the error charged to wicketkeeper Carey is perhaps the first genuine Australian error of the match. Being as we're on the final day of a five day test match, this is high praise and indeed indicative of their supreme dominance all around. 4.52am Stokes, LBW, Bold Lion, 12. Against his natural grain, Ben Stokes simply dropped anchor and tried to bat out the day defensively and his battle with Gaza, Nathan Lyon, was the morning highlight. Strangely, his, dis strangely, his dismissal seemed, at first, to be a non-starter. Wrapped on the pads, but the ball appeared to be heading down leg side and missing the stumps. This was clearly a view shared by both the umpire and a reluctant Captain Smith, who took an age before deciding to review the decision via DRS. Even whilst the technology unravelled, demonstrating that Stokes was, in cricketing parlance, dead and out, it still mystified me. Not from a biased point of view, it simply looked like it was missing the stumps, but alas it was hitting the top of middle and leg stumps and Stokes, after a defiant display, was gone. 4.57am and DRS again. Wokes was immediately caught on the crease and seemingly feathering a catch behind but he immediately shook his head and confidently confirmed to partner Joss Butler that all was well and the Australians were appealing in vain. They were, but the buzzing and chirping fielders were smelling blood in the water as usual. 5am drinks break. England are 105 for six and have added just 23 runs to the overnight title, overnight total, and far more crucially, have lost two of their remaining six wickets. Chris Wokes is now new to the crease and still on naught with partner, partner Butler on a dogged and reserved nine. Runs are irrelevant for either side. The only numeric of any importance is England's six wickets. They have four left and all four have to collectively bat for the rest of the day. 6 a.m. lunch break, England 142 for six. In the hour between drinks and the lunch break, the visitors scored 37 runs and again, crucially, lost no further wickets. Wokes scored the majority of the runs in this session with 28 and Butler that normal slapper, dasher and swisher and wielder of a batting magic wand is, dare I say, dug in. Dogmatic and doggedly still in and playing entirely against his natural type and at lunch has 16 runs to his name. Nathan Lyon has bowled the entire two, session, two, two hour session for the Australians and it's been a joy to watch despite my early morning English loyalties. Lyon has had four, sometimes five catches around the bat David Warner and Marnus Labashain chattering and chirping away loudly and the freedom to be ultra 
Australian pleasing, ultra attacking. The hosts ended the session with spin from both ends and that blooming pest Labashain and his leggies, leg spinners, adding to the incessant pressure and bleating from the goat at the other end. Fascinating test match cricket all round and here's the kicker. There are but a handful of overs before a new ball is available to those hungry Australian sharks. Should Wokes and Butler fend off the twin spinning advances of Lyon and Labashain, next up will be the ultra fast pace of Stark and probably Cameron Green. I predicted last night that England would survive until 30 minutes before or after lunch. I'll revise that to an hour and a half into the afternoon session after Stark has had a few overs with the new ball. 7.03 a.m. and a 50 run partnership between Wokes, 36, and Butler, 21. The new ball has been taken. Game on. 7.33 a.m. Wokes, bold Richardson, 44. Damn. On the fifth ball of the over, Wokes creamed a magnificent cover drive for four before Richardson bowled an almost identical follow-up ball, but this one ducked in towards the Englishman's pads and crashed into the top of middle stump. It was, quite emphatically, a beautiful delivery and ended Wokes' stubborn innings. 7.40am drinks break. England, 166 for seven. Australia need three wickets to win. 7.49am, Robinson presents a tough court and bowl chance to Michael Nesser who just fails to hold on to the return catch in his follow through. 8.35 a.m. Robinson caught Smith, bold line, eight. With just five minutes until the tea interval and hope springing irrationally in an, in an eternal direction, Nathan Lyon fizzed a spinning delivery that caught the edge of Ollie Robinson's bat and his stoic resistance came to an end. The end is now nigh for England. 8.39 a.m. DRS again as Stuart Broad padded up not playing a shot and with the Australians leaping like tigers around the bat, Captain Smith appealed the not out decision but the umpire was correct with the ball tracking over the stumps. 8.54 a.m. DRS again and again with an under pressure Stuart Broad as he successfully reviews an LBW decision from the umpire as he'd inside edged the ball onto his pads and was clearly not out. 8.57 a.m. T interval England 180 for 8. Defying expectations and my dire prediction of the game being all over two hours ago, England are still alive and thanks in large part to Joss Butler's dogged 25 runs from 196 balls. 25 runs from 196 balls received. The task now is simple and just as impossible as the task was at the start of the day. But now they have just 26 overs in which to simply survive. Perhaps just two hours under the Adelaide floodlights. It's faintly incredible that England have made this match as much of a contest as they have and with two hours of play still left they still have a miraculously long hope of saving and drawing the test match. But 9.26am Butler hit wicket Bob Richardson 26. For those of you hardy souls who may read this and not thoroughly understand cricketing terminology hit wicket is an incredibly rare type of dismissal and so rare it's equally in keeping with both this test match and Butler's incredible back to, back to the wall innings. Hit wicket, then your luck is well and truly out. England, 182 for nine. Australia have 23 overs in which to find the last wicket for the win. They need just 16 minutes. 9.42 a.m. Anderson, Court Green, Bold Richardson, two. And at 9.42 a.m. the test match is over and Australia have, despite England's desperate rearguard defence, won a comprehensive and thoroughly deserving test match by 275 runs. It was hope rather than expectation for England this morning and for a batting team off to collapse, they didn't and Joss Butler batted superbly before getting himself out in such a surreal way. Applaud its fall to Jai Richardson who cleaned up this innings with five wickets for 42 runs and it must be stated that Australia with Richardson and the busy Michael Nessa in for their star bowlers of Cummins and Hazelwood still won this test match comfortably and the portents for the remaining three matches do not look rosy for a tired and weary looking England. I ended my article for the first test match with the ode of it's the hope that kills you. England hoped and were very gallant in this last day defence, but have barely won a session across two test matches now. Alas. See you 
on Christmas day night. I stumbled and bumbled my way through, who cares, we're by the River Severn, it's Ironbridge, there's my book, it's available on Amazon, um, there'll be links below for, has, for how you can possibly support me by buying this book and any other ways and means, if you can, of ways to support me. This is beautiful Ironbridge. There are people wandering up and down the wharfage. It's raining. There's a storm coming. There's the oldest iron bridge in the world in the background behind me. And in the foreground is a silly man in a Radiohead t-shirt that you can't quite see. In a silly pair of glasses talking to a camera but talking to you. And I do sincerely thank you for being there if I ever release this. But I'll leave you in peace and in solidarity. And on the banks of the beautiful River Severn. Thanks for watching.